what's up? This is Johnny Three Tears from Hollywood Undead. You're with me and my boy Rob on Front Row Live. Coming Home is such an incredible track. I've been literally like listening to it over and over and over just recently, or uh, just today. And um, first of all, New Direction. Yeah. Second of all, you guys are starting out with clean vocals. Uh, I, don't, I don't recall that ever happening before on, on a previous track. Um, was, that, was that Charlie? Was that Danny? Like who, who was that in the intro? That was on the intro is Charlie, then it's Danny, then it's me. So there's three vocalists on it and all of them, yeah, they're, clean, they're all clean vocals. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but everybody in the band can sing. Um, no, I'm not saying, you know, sing sing we're not but we're proficient so we usually don't do it but we decided like hey let's just like everybody let's do some clean stuff and it's kind of um you know we wrote the song about being on the road kind of thing and you know we all have families now and it's a lot different for us now than it was 15 years ago obviously um so we kind of wrote it as an ode to our our kids and you know I, i've had to tell them many so many times oh you know i'll be back soon i'll be back soon so we were trying to touch on that emotion and to touch on that emotion, it doesn't really sound good with when you're screaming at the top of your lungs, you know? <laughs> what was that like new, uh, new style of singing um, for you guys like though? Because, you know, we're used to hearing like the screams or, or like the, the, the rap rocks. The hip hop stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But this time around, it's like, we're kind of getting a more vulnerable side of Hollywood undead. So like, what was that like in, in the creative process? I mean, it's no, honestly, we write songs together that don't go to, you know, that we don't put out as Hollywood Undead. So we, we've done this stuff before. We just never really do it with Hollywood Undead. So I've been a band, in a band of one form or another with these guys for so long before Hollywood Undead that we've done this stuff. We've sat in the same room and done this stuff so many times that we usually just don't tap into it when we're writing for Hollywood Undead. Because, you know, I think you start expecting, you have expectations from the people who listen to your music. And sometimes it's kind of like, uh, you know, you don't know what the reaction is going to be, but as, as we've grown and we've written, you know, we're, we're going to be writing our seventh album. You kind of really have to stretch the horizons more because otherwise writing the music just gets so uh, mundane and um, you know, you're just kind of running the same pattern. So it was cool to be able to do something different for Hollywood Undead. Um, and, you know, I, I know a lot of our fans are, uh, they're, they're an emotional group. So I think they touch on that stuff more so than maybe, you know, we're not like a fucking a metal band where if we did that, there'd be hell to pay. So I right. think we have a base that understands that, that knows we like to experiment a lot. And um, I think, I think, you know, it's, it's been well received so far and people seem happy or sad, whatever, who cares. Right. <laughs> so one thing that caught my attention was uh, the chorus of, of this track and it's like the chanting i feel like fans are going to pick that up immediately especially for the live shows i feel like you're going to be hearing this over and over and over again like um how you know what was the idea behind that chant that you guys have of uh, in the chorus section i mean um when we build a melody you know we, we usually start with an idea um and then we'll either write a melody first or music first in this case we kind of built the components together, which isn't usual. So I think the structure of the song was a little different because we wrote it differently. And I, I think at the end of the day, you really want the emotional aspects of the chorus to hit. And when you have something big, it services the, the overall message, I guess. So you're not just relying on the lyrics. It has an impact on its own, regardless of what you're saying. Um, so when you combine some nice vulnerable lyrics with a big melodic uh, hit with it, it, it kind of serves a bigger impact, I guess. So it's one of those songs that we absolutely, you know, the beauty of these, these songs and stuff is um, you have a lot of people out there who can relate to the messaging. And so our thought is, you know, the more people who can get that, that immediate gratification and attach themselves to the rest of the song, then, you know, uh, it'll mean something to them too, hopefully. So was Matt Good part of this uh, production for this song as well? Or did you guys jump in the studio with a different producer? Or was this a self-produced no, yeah. thing with the band? This was all Matt Good. Um, my homie's a genius, bro. <laughs> um, and that's one of the reasons with that chorus, too, is he doesn't, let us, uh, he doesn't let us off the hook unless he thinks it's perfect. But that's what a producer is supposed to do. So 
we made it with him. Um, the, our whole second volume that's coming out was all uh, Matt Good also. So nice. uh, we did the so whole he's, double he's record. Taking, he's taking over the new empire, volume one and two. Bro, don't tell him that. <laughs> I'll take that to heart. He already thinks he's the man. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, I guess he's the king, dude. I'm just a popper now. I'm, I'm a little jester trying to make him laugh in the studio. <laughs> so he took my job, this son of a... Man, you better be careful. He might jump on tour with you guys and like not let one of you guys hit the stage. I'll let him jump on. I'll jump off. That'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay here at home. <laughs> as far as uh, the instrumentation for this track, uh, the drums are very prominent on this on this release or on this single. Um, yeah. is, Luke, is Luke Holland or Holland on it as well, or do you guys have like a different drummer for this time around? Like, no, yeah, all the songs on on Volume One, Volume Two. It's actually the first time we've ever uh, solely worked with one producer on a record. Wow, man, um, that's awesome. We usually use three. We've never even used two. Um, some we've used four because we like to get different elements, but. Uh, this was kind of an experiment to see, like, okay, if we're in the same room with one person for a long time, you, the good thing is you get more comfortable because we've worked with producers for, like, a week, and by the time you, like, remember their name, you're done. So it's like you never – which is good, too, because it keeps you on your toes. So it's just, it, there's definitely a different element. But, yeah, Luke Holland did all the drums. Um, Matt Good did all the production. So we had one team straight through for all 20 songs. Um, so – yeah, it was, it, was, it was different. It was different for all of us, but it was cool. Why did you feel um, com Coming Home was like the appropriate track right now for this, this time, this, you know, during 2020? I know what you mean. I mean, everybody's fucking stuck at home, so we might mm -hmm. as well talk about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, I've always tried to, at least when we write, now obviously this was written before all that was going down, but I think we put some thought into that where it's like, you know, messaging, you want it to fit the times, I guess. And I think a lot of people um, are scared, they're nervous, and you, you, that vulnerability, I, dude, I know music gets me through a lot of my writing it or listening to it. Um, and this whole time period has been such a question mark for so many people that hopefully, you know, you, you could put out a song that um, gives someone some comfort or some solace maybe lets them know that we're all, we've all been in the, this position. We're all in it together. I know that in my, the struggles in my life, one of the things that helped me most um, was understanding that there's a million other people going through the same thing. And there's a million other people going through much worse, especially. So, you know, cause when the world's kind of caving in around you, you think it's just you. And this is the first time I can actually say, no, it's everybody. Everybody's going through it. So, Hopefully, you know, people get, get something from the song that brings them a little soulless uh, during this time and uh, reminds them that this too shall pass and um, you always make it home at the end of the day, eventually. Now with this new direction on this song, um, can fans expect something similar like this for this for, um, volume two? Or like, um, will there be even more different sounds for volume two? The, the, the volume two is so all over the place that uh, <laughs> there's still going to be people like, what? Uh, we really <laughs> went for it. <clears throat> so we got some really cool, like hipster hip hop songs on there. We got some big rock tracks. Um, we got a, a song. We did a song with this dude named Kill Station. He's a rapper. Uh, mm -hmm. I love this dude. And that was really cool. He grew up. He's a, he's a really young guy. I think he's 22, 21. But he was a big fan of ours growing up. And he was in the same studio. And we started talking. We're like, yo, let, we're already in the studio. He was in the other room, a different, you know, working with somebody else. So we did a song with him that's unlike anything I think we've ever did. It has no similarity to anything we've done. So there's definitely some curveballs, and some of them definitely miss the strike zone. Some of these are way off, way off base, bro. Go to first. This is no, I'm just kidding. So they're all they're all really good, but they're all re they're really different. So I think the the record all the way until the end is kind of probably going to surprise people because some of it still surprises me. That's what happens when you do drugs in the studio, kids. Don't do it. <laughs> Actually, don't do drugs at all, right? The, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the surprises is the best part about Hollywood of Dead because I feel like that's why, you know, this 15-year career, that longevity, like, exists with you guys because you guys are always testing the waters. Um, it's never the same record as the last. Um, so, like, especially with so many members in the band, like, doing various things, like, how mm -hmm. do you guys continue to keep it fresh every single time? It's really a matter of your mental outlook. So this, it's challenging. It's not easy because, you know, we've written 
I don't know, a few hundred songs or something at this point, not just on our records. We had put out 30 or 40 songs before we even did, made a record. So you have to, um, you got to pull, it, it takes some mental acrobats because you have to almost, you got to get in the studio and when you get in the studio to record another record, you kind of have to make believe that it's the first time. And it, it, it's, it's tough, you know what I mean? Because you're in the same room with the same people for 15 years, but if you let your music get dull or lose its edge or you, most particularly if you don't care about it, I can promise you that other people won't care about it. So our, we're our harshest critics. We make sure if we're happy with it and we think it's good at that point, I don't really pay much attention to what other people think. Cause I satisfied the worst critics of all, which is us. So um, when we, when we're done, we know it's done because we're, we're tapped out, but I think you have to go in and, and just kind of like any other job that you, you may have, you know, imagine being a garbage man. It's the same thing every fucking day. But if I was a garbage man, I'd try to make it as interesting as possible. Um, and I think and that's really the, the thing. And, you know, getting drunk once in a while doesn't hurt because then you really think you're in a different place. If you get enough of it in you, um, you wake up, you're like, where the fuck am I? Who am I? Then you're on to something. More creativity. <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> we're just a bad hangover I thought, dude, we've written so much stuff when we were messed up that you know because you're you're outside your own mind you think it's like genius like i thought man we're, we're writing the greatest song ever and you, you you leave the studio you're all stoked and you go back in the next day and listen to it and it's like the worst thing in the world but your perceptions are so fucked up that at the time you thought it was brilliant and then you're just trying to delete it before anybody else hears it. <laughs> before it goes online. <laughs> yeah. No, before even the guy, the janitor hears it, I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> it's that fucking bad. It's worse than you can imagine. <laughs> and I would have sworn it was a Pink Floyd song an hour ago, but I guess man. it wasn't. You got to keep trying, man. 15 years isn't enough, trying. man. You still, you still have a lot of learning to do. <laughs> we, got some, we got a few years left in us before it's all over. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so coming home is the second uh release off of volume two um the first one yeah. was idle with with tech nine and yeah i've i've talked to tech nine various times in the past and um he's mentioned before you know it's happened now but like he's mentioned before how he wanted to work with slipknot and how he wanted to work with uh, with hollywood undead and how he wanted to work with corn and all these like great yeah. bands um you know how awesome was that collaboration with him like were you guys in the studio together like how did that kind of happen uh between the two uh groups you know no so we didn't record together he's in kansas city and we did this during so there yeah. were we couldn't we barely were able to do the video that was like we i had to go get a test and all this stuff to be even go in because there's no productions allowed it had to, there's only, but with me and a few of the dudes, there's only like a few people that you can have outside of that. So you have no production crew because of all these rules they have for production work when you're doing this thing. So we, we talked on the phone and did all that stuff. And then, you know, I told him, you know, Hey, this is what the song's kind of about. And then like everything tech nine touches, he just killed it and stuff. So, you know, I had high expectations and he exceeded those. And then I think the coolest, so me and we went out there to his spot in Kansas city to do the video um and you know i i always respect dudes like that because the guy could act however he wants you know he's earned it and he's just the most down-to-earth humble guy you never know you're talking to a, like a legend because that's what he is um he's one of the top five rappers in in history and you think you're just talking to you know some dude he was just cool he's cool as fuck, and he's brilliant and he's smart as hell and it was it was it was an honor and it, it's cool for guys like us i think or anybody to meet someone like that who's accomplished so much because it reminds you that, you know, you, I've met, I've, I have met a lot of guys in bands that I was like, oh, this is going to be so cool. And they're like, and it ruins their music for me. I can't even listen to them after that because I was like, because then, you know, they're just. A so in this case, it was cool because it was the opposite. I like his music even more because he was so down to earth and so cool. He loves his fans. He talks about them like they're his kids. And I, I just have a lot of respect for that because it's easy to get lost in all the ego shit in, the, in, the, in this industry and to see someone who's accomplished what he has, who's still as down to earth as can be, um, I find it very inspirational. That's awesome. And the track, I mean, the track was incredible. Um, and if you release that as, as the first release off of volume one, I can only imagine what the entire album is going to sound like. Yeah, it gets more haywire as it goes. 
<laughs> so, so lastly, for the fans out there, um, what has been the biggest challenge in creating Volume 2, whether it's for you personally or as a band as a whole? I think actually what we brought up earlier is writing a new record. You know, we get a lot. Of, I, I read the E once in a while uh, or I talk to people and they, they, they're, oh, will you do another record like this record. How come you don't do music like this? And I think it touches on what we were talking about. You know, it's funny because if you went in and recorded a record that sounded like an old record, then you'd, they'd be complaining that it sounds like that record. So it's hard to keep everybody happy. But I think the biggest challenge is going in um, over and over and over again and making good music and keeping that, um, that hunger. And, um, you know, you have a lot of challenges when you, when you first are coming up in a band. You know, you, your label, the industry doesn't believe in, you, believe in you. You don't have a fan base that believes in you. So you're trying to prove everybody wrong, essentially, when you start doing it. Everybody around you tells you nobody does it and makes a living doing that. Go do something else, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, so to, to keep that hunger and that, uh, the appetite for music fresh and stuff, I think is a challenge for any band as time moves on. But, um, me and the guys were, we're we, we grew up together. We know how to humble each other. And if someone, you know, so we, we keep each other in order, but I think, um, just going back in and creating something, not that our fans are proud of, but that I'm proud of is always the, the hardest thing to do. But so far I haven't let me myself down. If I let someone else down, sorry, buddy. Too bad. <laughs> on to the next. <laughs> yeah, on to the next, bro. Maybe, maybe uh, number seven will you'll like. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, thank you again for taking the time to, to talk to me. And uh, oh, my pleasure, bro. I hope you and your family are staying safe. And uh, congratulations yeah. once again with coming home. Another epic track, another epic release from you guys, and I definitely look forward to volume two, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that very much, man.